And welcome back to another episode of TWIP Weddings. My name is Bruce Clark, and this week I've got a very special guest. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to sit down with Susan Stripling to chat about her latest resource for wedding photographers, The Wedding School. Good morning, Susan, or good afternoon, I guess, in your neck of the woods. I think it's good afternoon. That would yes. that would be appropriate, yes. <laughs> welcome to uh, TWIP Weddings. We're really happy to have you on this week. But before we get into the show, we just want to remind you how you can participate in the show. We've got several different ways to interact with us. First, you can visit the website at thisweekinphoto.com slash weddings. Uh, there you'll find the show notes for each episode, which will contain links to everything that Susan and I talk about on the show today. Um, you can also leave your comments and feedback for us in the comments section. If you have a question or a suggestion of a topic for a future episode, uh, you can also email us. Our email address is twipwed at thisweekinphoto.com. Or if you prefer using social media, just add the hashtag TWIPWED to your post and we'll periodically check for your posts there. Mm -hmm. If you want to follow along with us, uh, we are on Instagram, albeit not with any regularity, so we need to get better at that. Um, but you can follow us at TWIPWED. Um, and Facebook, uh, we have a Facebook group. Uh, just look for TWIPWED on Facebook and lots of new members joining in there every week and lots of good discussions and people are asking questions and helping each other out in there. So definitely join our Facebook group. But without further ado, we want to jump into the show. And sort of as I mentioned at the top of the show, I'm joined by Susan Stripling. And Susan's here to tell us more about her latest resource for wedding photographers called The Wedding School. So for those maybe who've been living under a rock or who, are, <laughs> who don't know who Susan is... I'd be surprised at this point if you're listening to our podcast and we don't know who Susan Stripling is. They probably, do you think Susan, they've been living in a cave, maybe? Um, maybe. Maybe, possibly. <laughs> well, uh, for those who don't know Susan, she's an award-winning wedding photographer based in Brooklyn, correct? Brooklyn, yes. Brooklyn, New York. Um, originally, though, you were from Philly? Um, or, originally, I actually started my business in Tallahassee, Florida, and I was oh, there okay. until 2008. But Brooklyn is correct, but Philly is also correct. I go back and forth. I live half-time in Brooklyn, and that's where my studio is. And I live half-time in the Philadelphia area, and that's where my husband's studio is. So we spend a lot of time on the New Jersey Turnpike, basically. Very nice. <laughs> but I should just literally list my permanent address as the interior of my car, New Jersey Turnpike. New Jersey Turnpike, yes. Pretty much, yes. But you get to enjoy cheesesteaks yes. and... And pizza. And pizza. And bagels. So you've, that sounds like... I just finished doing the whole 30 food program and that so you those could two, eat anything <laughs> you could eat anything so those sound really fabulous actually well, right? in new york have cornered the market on carbs so yes. pretty much yes yeah well, new york's one of my favorite cities we've been there multiple times and i love new york city i've never been to philly though so one of these days i'll have to get to philly you should come it is shockingly beautiful and the food is amazing so mm -hmm. yes i've heard we'll that so. save all your carbs for your visit to philly and we'll get you some cheesesteaks that sounds good. That sounds good. So again, for those maybe who don't know Susan, of course, yes, I mean, you've won numerous awards uh, <laughs> for your photography. I mean, your photography is amazing. Um, I think you. in 2012, you were named one of the top 10 photographers by American Photo Magazine. True, true. And I think you're, I mean, the way I came to know you is just more through your education. Um, yeah. You've provided photography education to, you know, literally thousands. <laughs> Maybe you're up to hundreds of thousands. Of hundreds of thousands. Everyone, everyone, stage. everywhere. Over one. You should be like McDonald's, the sign, you know, over 100,000 <laughs> photographers served. Except good for you, not bad Except for you. Except good for you, yes, in a good way, yes. So, and of course, you may um, have seen Susan through maybe at one of her workshops or online education or your multiple appearances on Creative Live. <laughs> I'm everywhere. You're everywhere. She's everywhere. So now you've got an exciting new uh, resource specifically targeted at wedding photographers. I and do. it's called The Wedding School. Quite it exciting. Is. So yes. how, did the, how did the idea, did, did I do okay introducing you? Is there anything that you I You did. It's really hard to sit and listen to someone list off accolades um, about yourself. It feels a little creepy, but you hit the good ones. Um, okay. And you said really nice things. So I'm feeling pretty, pretty okay about myself right now. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> So the so tell us the wedding school. Yeah, this is a new initiative from you. So you've always had uh, like at least for the past several years, as long as I've known you or about you, you've had a lot of educational resources for wedding photographers. So I have. Is this a is this an evolution? A revolution? <laughs> You know, and I, I've said several times both to my friends and to some colleagues that it just really feels like everything that I've ever been doing educationally has sort of led to this. I started teaching, I think my very first seminar that I ever gave was in like 
2005 or 2006, and I spoke in Pensacola, Florida, to a group of photographers at a diner. Like we were literally like teaching in the back room of the diner, right? And it was yeah. it was really fun. Uh, I've always loved public speaking. Like people who say that they're afraid of public speaking, I just like I just don't understand it. I think it's super fun. Yes, um, I do too. Yeah, and it's partly you know I have a degree in theater. I think that that really sort of helped me not be afraid in front of people. Um, yeah, so I started off doing kind of small seminars here and there, and I taught a couple of small workshops here and there, and then I started writing books, because um, I really like to write. And I put books out there, and then I would update the books, and then I would put more books out there, and then I started speaking at conventions, and, and then I started um, sort of doing online education, and I realized that everything that I was doing, first of all, was usually for somebody else. I was speaking for another company, I was speaking for a convention, and I just kind of had all of these ideas of, you know what, one day I would really love to do a, B, C, and D educationally, but I don't know how to do that. Like, I, I don't know. And I would just always shelve these ideas. And then finally, the idea just came around to, hey, why don't I just create a one shop, like a one stop shop for every, all of my ideas from templates to books to video education to so on and so forth and put it all in one place. And not only education from me, but education from other instructors, because I can tell you everything about how I know to do what I do, but right. I'm one person in one market running one business. And, you know, my husband doesn't run the same type of business I do. And my best friend doesn't run the same business I do. And there are photographers all over the world running different types of business and shooting differently. And it just, my goal is to bring together this community and this collective of instruction that will go deep into topics in a way that nothing I've ever done before and nothing I've ever seen before has done. So I figured with all my free time, right, yeah. you know, I may as well just yeah. invent a school. Why, Why not? not? Yeah, what the heck, you know. And, and, I, still, one of the, and I still shoot full time. That's, that's the crazy thing. Because last year I did 50, 53 weddings last year. And this year I've got, I think I have 40 booked right now, but it's still early in the year. Um, my goal is to hit like 46 or 47. So doing this and um, shooting full time. So like, I, I shoot, just don't sleep. <laughs> I was going to say, I shoot like 20 weddings a year of my <laughs> own. And I, and I still don't know where I don't have time. So I don't like, sleep or really ever go out. And I'm pretty sure I'm not human. Um, but I get a lot done. Yeah, well, that's okay. That's, <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> well, one of the things that I think, I, you know, I've always admired about you is, is that you're not just sort of, you haven't just, you know, built up all the experience and said, okay, I can just put my feet up now and do the workshop tour oh, and, and I'm good. Like you're yeah. in it, living it, breathing it. You're a full-time working professional yeah. photographer. And I mean, I could, right? Like I could turn around tomorrow and be like, I don't want to shoot anymore. I, I just want to go out and I want to educate. But the problem with that is that I could teach photo skills, right? Like I could teach lighting and, and posing and all of that. And that's going to be great. But how in the world can I teach business and finance or sales and marketing to somebody about an industry that, I'm not in anymore. Yeah. So if I quit as a wedding photographer, you know, if I'd quit two years ago, I really couldn't teach you business or marketing right now because so much has changed in the last two years. So if you want my information to be current and helpful and actually make an impact on photographers and their business, I've got to actually be out there doing it. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, you hear a lot about the, when you know, people go to university or college, and there are college professors. They they might be very intelligent people, and maybe at one point in time they were that, you know that was their career. But they've been out of it for so long, yeah. they're just not relevant anymore. And you, you so I, so I think that can be a you know a dangerous if you go too too far down the very path tricky. of just education yes. and not living it day to day. You can be yes. kind of out of touch with what's actually going on in the real world. So. Oh, I completely agree with you. And I think that there is a point you know in a career, and like I'm thinking particularly like about Monty Zucker, who was a portrait photographer for so many years, and then while he was still shooting, most of his endeavors were towards education as he, you know, was a little bit older. And I think that if you have a career behind you like that, then you have a lot to teach. But for some of us who've only been shooting weddings for five, six, 14, however many years, that's not enough experience to just stop and pretend like I know it all because after a point, I just don't. Yeah. And, you know, our, our tagline sort of for the wedding school is real honest wedding photography education. And I can't bring that to you if I don't understand exactly what it is to be a real working wedding photographer. So, yeah. yeah. And that, that real honest part, like you scream that. <laughs> you, don't, you don't hold back anything. You don't 
I'm not subtle. (laughs) You're not subtle. (laughs) You tell it as it is. And I love that brutal honesty because I think there is a degree of, you know, when you look at some of the education that's out there and some of the other people that are teaching, sometimes it's everything is rosy and beautiful and perfect and, and just jump in. It's going to be amazing. It'll be fine. Like, live your dream. And, yeah, live your dream and quit your day job and you'll be totally fine and, and no worries. But it's, And like, yeah, live your dream, but maybe you don't need to quit your day job right now or maybe you shouldn't or maybe you can live your dream, but it's going to take a lot of years of really hard work. Like I think there really does need to be a balance between inspiration and honesty, you know, yeah. and people who go out and just quit their jobs and jump full force into the industry without any knowledge of what it is to run a business, you know, be the best photographer in the world and you might not make it, which is yeah. tough. Absolutely. Well, I want to ask you, because uh, I didn't really have this question, but you, you mentioned <laughs> that you know a lot's changed in the last couple of years. What yeah. are some of the biggest things that you've noticed just in the wedding photography industry as a whole in the last couple of years? Uh, what are some <laughs> of the changes? It's so hard. Like, it's just, to be perfectly honest, it is so hard right now. Um, and, you know, it, we all kind of joke about the glory years but being from 2007 to 2009 right when it was so easy to book wedding. You just threw your prices out there and people called and they were like, yes, it sounds great and everybody's doing great. And, you know, low price photographers, mid price photographers, high price photographers were all just, it was a great time to be in business. And then all of a sudden it just wasn't. Um, And it got harder. And then the, I don't want to sound like that old photographer who's complaining about the newbies in the market, but there was a huge influx of people who came into the industry in those years and it's hard to battle against such a tidal wave of new blood. And so I'm noticing more and more now while I'm hitting my numbers and I'm getting where I need to be, it is so much harder to book weddings now than it ever was before. And it is a, you know, in the past, marketing used to be so easy. You would take out an ad in the magazine, you would maybe have like an online listing or two, and then you just put out really good work and it was cool. Mm -hmm. But now it's that, and then it's Facebook, and then it's Instagram, and then it's Twitter, and then it's meeting people in person, and it's styled shoots, and it's schmoozing, and it's just such a high (laughs) I mean, it kind of is, right? Like, I had my 14-year-old daughter showing me how to use Snapchat the other day, and I could find myself thinking, this is so dumb. And I just started thinking, oh, no, like, is this where I'm going? Am I going to start thinking that everything new is dumb and am I gonna have to hire my 14 year old to be my social media consultant which would be fine she'd probably be pretty good at it but the level of hustle that you have to have now in the industry is so phenomenal and how hard it is to just get those inquiries in the door and then turn those inquiries into bookings and paying clients it's just it's starting to become very tiring And I would say, whereas in the past, I could spend 30 minutes on an inquiry and convert it into a booked client, now you're talking about multiple hours, lots of emails, phone calls, sometimes meetings. People are still investing the money, but I'm spending 10 times the amount of time to get these people in the door. And it's, I mean, it's hard. And I think that it's, um, it's been refreshing to hear other photographers admit how hard it is because we don't want to talk about it being hard, you know, especially people who are industry leaders and educators and, and so on and so forth. You want to say, yeah, like I'm killing it. It's awesome. And I mean, I'm doing fine. I wouldn't say killing it because that implies like an, a level of not really having to work hard at it. Right. But I mean, I wake up in the morning and I work and I go to bed at night and I'm still working in my head and it's not working on how can I sell workshops to photographers or how can I, you know, so on and so forth. It's, how can I book my weddings for this year? You know, and it's it's scary in a way that it never was before, but something about that that scariness um, also brings kind of a new elation. Like, ooh, it's really hard. Ooh, what do I have to figure out now? Challenge. And, and it's a challenge, right? Like, and if you want to stay on top and you want to keep moving ahead, you have to keep evolving, which is both frightening, but also just really exhilarating. Yeah, especially um, when you're a solopreneur, right? Those are yeah. all the aspects that why, the, you know, a lot of the reasons why a lot of us get into a, a business, although it's there right. are some photographers that get into it because they love photography, but they hate the business side. And then yeah. they, you know, they get into it. And after a couple of years, they realize, geez, this is 80% business <laughs> and 20% photography. Yeah, I'm out of if here. even that much photography. Yeah. yeah. So um, do you... Do you find it's interesting? Do you find that the 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 general uh, value of photography from the public has diminished or changed or decreased, or do you just think it's a result of just we're we're inundated with photography every day and there's such a saturation? Do you think that's, that's a what's kind of driving it? I think that the separation between photography as art and photography as appealing to the masses is getting wider apart. Um, I see people that are still 
sort of serving the, I hate this phrase, but it's the best phrase for it, the high end market, mm -hmm. right? Like the higher price photographers, they're still doing pretty well. Those of them that had good business structures and are very clear about selling art to their clients and so on and so forth, you will still find the client that is willing to invest in that and view photography as art. And it's not just selfies and cell phone pictures. Right. But the problem is, is with a lot of the millennial shoppers, you know, a lot of them still really do value the art and the investment, but a lot of them just want more and they equate wedding photography to taking 157 selfies and picking the best one. With right. this thing. <laughs> with that thing. With the and phone. Those who um, are watching the video, I'm holding up my iPhone. He is holding up his iPhone. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm watching, I'm wearing my watch and I watch, have my yeah. iPhone here. Like it's literally within reach. And I love documenting my life with my iPhone, right? Like my personal Instagram account is just all iPhone pictures. I think it's wonderful. But I would never trust an important moment of my life to my iPhone. And luckily there are clients that still value that. But the problem is, is that wading through the masses to find the clients that value that is just getting harder. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is you used to be able to say, well, you can't take good pictures with your iPhone, right? Like the difference between professional photography and iPhoneography is the quality. I'm not going to lie. I'm getting pictures out of this, this iPhone 6 Plus that are pretty freaking good. Like yeah. it handles light well and it photographs well, but it's not the same as the photographs that I can make with my D750. Right? right? Like it's just not. And luckily there are enough clients that, that see that and value that. It's just, they're getting harder and harder to find. Yeah. You know, and weird. we have to continually, every time a new iPhone comes out, we have to reestablish ourselves as professionals in a different way, in a different light, and in a, you saying a different message. And it's just, it's exhausting. Yes, it can be terrible. But like I, I said, it's also exhilarating and that's why I love it. Excellent. So the idea for the wedding school, how long has it been? I guess you, you kind of mentioned it a little bit. How long has it been kind of brewing in your head? And how, <laughs> My whole life. <laughs> your whole life. And what was kind of the spark? What was the kind of the moment where you said, I got to do this? You know, I, I had a really wonderful conversation with a friend over dinner not long ago. Um, well, not long ago. And actually, it's probably been about six months by now. And we were talking about where I could go next both educationally and professionally. And I was talking about burnout because it's, as wedding photographers, you get seasonal burnout. And then I find that you get every so often number of years that you've been in business burnout. And I was having burnout really hard. Mm. Um, one of those like, oh my gosh, I have to keep doing this again. You know, why did I ever get into this? I don't remember why I love it. And we had this amazing conversation about why I love photography and you know, the passion that I have for improving the craft and helping other photographers and so on and so forth. And it just put a spark in my head that maybe there was something out there that was bigger than me. Like, um, if I could just create everything that I had ever wanted to do and also have other instructors helping further their messages, it would be amazing to have one resource for wedding photographers that was the definitive resource for wedding photography, everything from huge topics to small topics. And I percolated on that idea for a while and I was thinking, you know, somebody should do that. Somebody should do that. And then one day the thought was, why not me? Why don't I do that? Mm -hmm. And once I got that idea, um, I can have a little bit of a obsessive personality. So <laughs> once I locked onto that idea, like it was kind of like a dog with a bone oh, and we just, were just arr. off to the races. It was yeah. like, why not me? It's totally going to be me. Well, let's do this now. And this is what I had decided to use my down season for. Some people Excellent. relax and, and take breaks and I just come up with new projects. <laughs> no, that's yeah. good. And but so this is, I, I really do feel like everything that I've ever done educationally has been leading directly to this. So I'm just, extraordinarily excited yeah. about it yeah so there's a lot of re I mean there's a lot of resources out there I think more so probably today than ever in the history yeah. of photography right um, yes. I mean we have we have books we have ebooks we have podcasts we have videos we have audio books workshops yeah. audio books workshops I mean, conventions everything it's, it's crazy the amount that's out there but I think what would you say is this current state of that there's a lot of changes happening in the industry too um, peach pit I don't know if you heard just the other day, Peach Pit, no more. No way, really? Yeah. So Peach Pit has been folded. Um, uh, but, and that's been so instrumental for so many years in getting books out there. Yeah. So wow. it's changing. Uh, Kelby, just Scott Kelby just announced the other day that he cut 
you know, 20 or 30% of his staff. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I know. I heard that. It was crazy. It's all changing. And it's so it what do you, what do you think the current state of, of it is? And was that any a factor in your decision to kind of launch the wedding school? It was. And what's really interesting about that is I don't know what the current state of everything is, right? I, every single method of education that I've ever seen, ever seen always comes in either one form or another, either it's an in-person convention or it is online classes or it is books. Trying to take all of those things and the things that are good about all of them and putting them in one location was something that was very important to me because I like to read sometimes by watching videos and I like to read sometimes by, or I like to learn sometimes by reading books. So I was thinking, what if it's not all videos? What if it's not all books? What if it's a combination of all of the above and what's fascinating about the educational space in photography right now is I can see everybody sort of feeling out where it's going. Mm -hmm. um, where is it headed? Because it, what it used to be was the in-person convention. That was really the only thing there was. And then people started writing books and then there were podcasts popping up and now there's, there are so many different ways to learn. What we're really doing right now is looking at what makes all of those learning modules effective and how can we loop all of the good into the wedding school and cut out all of the difficult. Um, so it is, I, I can't say that I see it going one way or another way, but I think that I have very smart minds around me, um, you know, helping with all of that mm -hmm. and keeping my ear to the ground in terms of the industry and listening to other photographers and say, and listening to what they need instead of being over here thinking, what do I want to make? Like, I want to do this. I want to do this. I'm talking to people and I'm engaging with people and I'm reaching out on Facebook and I I'm hearing what they want. So we're very much trying to let the needs of the industry guide us. Um, but it is, I don't have a definitive answer. I don't know where it's going. I, I do, however, feel fairly certain that where it's going will um, be a place that we are very well positioned for. I mean, it seems to be that there's no lack of new people entering the wedding photography space. Yeah. I think it's probably, would you agree, it's probably one of the fastest growing genres of photography? Yeah, I mean, there? it's got a very low barrier to entry, right? You buy a camera, you get some pictures in a portfolio, you can shoot right. weddings, right? And that's a good thing and a bad thing, you know, for a lot of different reasons. But yeah, I mean, every single year, <laughs> people just pour into the industry and it freaks out a lot of, I don't want to say old timers because I like to think I'm still not that old yet, <laughs> uh, but it tends to freak people out. You know, you've been in business for 14 years and all of a sudden here are all of these new people every single year. And I say, welcome. Yeah. And some <laughs> of them come on. in and, and they're amazing. Like yeah. I've seen photographers oh, that come yeah. in, they've been shooting one or two years and I'm like, it. I'm yeah. still, yeah, I'm still trying to define a style and learn to do that. So, um, it's I, amazing I to watch these new photographers coming in because they have access to digital imagery and digital photography in a way that I didn't when I got started. Um, I was on kind of the very forefront of the digital wave, but you know, I look at my daughter with a camera who has been digital her whole life and it's just a completely different take on the art form and it is fascinating and amazing. And then I see a lot of people coming in who are, killer business people and pretty good photographers, but they are just nailing it on the business side of things. Yep. So it's very refreshing to see people coming into the business, wanting to build a business too, instead of just, Oh, I love photography. I'll make a career out of it. But very intelligent business people saying, I want to build a wedding photography business. So it's just, it's a, it's a very fascinating time to be a wedding photographer right now. It really is. Yeah. And there was a time probably not, not that long ago where wedding photography was kind of it was kind of seen as the bottom <laughs> rung of photography. Like it was kind of the last thing that you would go do. It's kind of where you go before you retire or right. before you quit. Yeah. 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 So, but I think that it's shifted a, a, quite a bit. You know, yes. I think it's now held in, in a lot higher regard. A lot yes. of people, I think, realize, you know, the demands and the challenges that wedding photography presents. And, and I think of all the genres of photography, it is the most difficult because you you have to be able to create amazing yeah. work <laughs> under intense pressure, under short timelines, and, and you can't artistic no direct. You have yeah. little to no say so in how 90% of the day is set up. And yeah. I think that once people sort of try wedding photography and they see how incredibly difficult it is, you know, every single year I see the respect for the craft growing, um, which is a wonderful thing. It's not just that thing that you do when you can't make money doing anything else in photography. Right. There are people getting into wedding photography because they want to shoot weddings. Um, right. Very talented photographers choosing to shoot weddings over other things. And... I just think that's beautiful. 
Yeah, and it's even the demographic has switched, right? Like if you, yeah. you look at go to WPPI now, it's probably would you say seventy percent female, thirty yeah. percent male? Which is, am which is amazing because when I first started going, this this year I think will be my fourteenth WPPI. You know, at the very beginning, it was a lot of men. I mean, and no, I do not have you know statistical data on this, but it was mostly men, not a lot of women. Mm -hmm. And then over the years, it's just been shifting and shifting and shifting, and now. It's kind of amazing to see how many women are not only entering the industry, but entering it and like dominating it. Oh, yeah. So, yes, I think that's, it's just fascinating to watch. Yeah. And brides. I mean, that's, I mean, the brides are the primary yeah. decision makers for the most part. Um, and they have that connection, right? So I that's find as, as, a, as a male photographer, I'm really struggling against the odds. Like I, the deck is stacked kind of more against me. It's uh, true. Me. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's, it's, it's a completely different method of, of, selling right like and I see I see my husband do it when he meets with clients and when he talks to clients on the phone and it's just a lot easier as a female to be like oh yeah wedding photography I got married myself too it's really cool and when, when a guy says oh yeah wedding photography I got married myself it's just not doesn't have the same it, it doesn't yeah. <laughs> it doesn't so yeah. but then again I sort of start to lose my oh I'm a girl and excited about weddings too as I get closer in age to their parents than I am to them. So it's <laughs> so it's sort of reconfiguring the marketing message, but I have noticed that that you know brides really do relate to their peers and if it is a female that is close in age to them, you've got a pretty good advantage. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So tell us a little bit then about the the wedding school. Yeah. Um so What's kind of different, I guess, from this resource from the other uh, things you've offered in the past? Because you've done like ebooks and, and different yeah, things. So lots. <laughs> yeah, lots, lots is different. Where does it all start? You know, we've answered that question a lot this week, and that is, you know, when we put the website out there and we sort of started launching it, and people started asking questions about it. That was the biggest question, which is like, we've seen you teach for an entire month straight before. You know, what what is different about this? Is it just going to be a repeat? And I guess the best nutshell answer that I have for that is whatever I've done before, whether it was one days, two days, 30 days, whatever, it all had an end date. And when it was over, it was over. This does not have an end date. So we are constantly able to add to it, expand on things. Like for example, the other day, um, we have the fundamentals of the, of the wedding school and then we have the learning library which is where we take these items from the fundamentals and we go very largely in depth into what they are. And I talked for an hour about my wedding day worksheet. So we have a deep dive that's entitled wedding day worksheet and it goes question by question by question, everything that I ask my clients before the wedding. And not only what do I ask them, but why do I ask it? Because a lot of times I'll be asking questions not only to get logistical answers, but to also understand the day a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so it went into, you know, and I've taught before and been like, this is my worksheet and this is the sort of stuff I ask. But this went question by question by question and the philosophy behind each question in a way that I never have before. So if you're coming in and you're just watching the fundamentals, yes, it's going to look familiar to things that I've taught before online and in conventions because fundamentals are fundamentals, right? Absolutely. Like yep. you just don't break them up and shake them around that differently, yep. but it's getting deeply into the fundamentals and building out this learning library. You know, if you could see the wedding school in three months, six months, nine months from now, there would be no question as to how is it different because the answer would be apparent once you see the library of education that we're building. But I understand that that's a question that people have now and it's a perfectly valid question. Yeah. Um, so, in, so the the school itself, what um, what can kind of students expect to find when they become a member? So, right now, you mentioned that there's sort of the library, um, and then you've got the fundamentals. Those are kind right. of the key components of the of the wedding school as it stands. So, yes. it's a combination of video content and um, yes, there are textbooks. Textbooks? I love textbooks. Um, spreadsheets are my favorite. Um, but yeah, <laughs> what people will find when they come in is we're building out the fundamental series. So you'll be able to go through and watch this kind of like very in-depth table of contents as to what is important in all levels of wedding photography and how I feel about it and what I do in my business about it. Then you'll be able to see, like for example, right now under our wedding skills pillar, we have six deep dive learning library videos about shooting all aspects of the wedding day. So there's an hour long video on details, mm -hmm. shot settings, lighting, setup, so on and so forth. And then you also have, um, I've written four textbooks and we're at like 400 something pages of textbook. So Paul, I know, I'm kind of crazy like that. No, that's good. <laughs> so while you go through the fundamentals, as you're watching the fundamentals, there are corresponding textbooks and the textbooks in and of themselves are massive deep dives. 
So if all you did was came in and watched those six videos under wedding skills and read the textbooks, you're already going to get more information than I've ever taught before. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's amazing. And our plan for this year is bringing in guest instructors, uh, building out the learning library, constantly listening to the needs of the people in the wedding school and what they want and what they want to learn about and, and bringing instructors in to teach them the things they need to know. Yeah. So it's it's just going to be amazing. I, I really like how you identified kind of the five, I don't know if you want to call them pillars or yeah, areas the or, or yeah. what, what are the five sort of pillars that you identified? And, so and when I was looking at wedding photography and I was thinking like, what are the areas in which you need to become proficient in not only to be a business owner, but also a wedding photographer? We have business and finance. I mean, that's, you know, money, 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 Can't sales and marketing, how to get that money, yes. um, post-production, which is kind of major. Mm -hmm. um, and then I broke up wedding skills and photo skills into two separate categories because I think that you have to have photo skills, right? How to choose a lens, how to light every single scenario, flash, off-camera flash, natural light, all of that Composition, stuff. Composition, all that stuff. Yeah. Exactly. But then you have wedding skills, and oh, that's, yes. <laughs> that's what is unique to our business. It's how do you manage a timeline with a client? How do you deal with the getting ready process? How do you move people from one place to another to do a first look? What do you do when the DJ throws up laser lights on the dance floor and you don't know how to handle it? It's everything that has to do with shooting a wedding that has nothing to do with the actual photography. Right. How do you and calm a nervous a, bride? <laughs> right. You, that is a huge skill set in and of itself that I think often gets ignored mm -hmm. when people educate or it gets lumped into just the shooting of the wedding day, but handling yourself on a wedding day and managing the logistics and the skills to get through a wedding, it's just a completely different set of skills. So oh, we, we gave it a pillar all of, its, all of its own, and it actually has a textbook all of its own. That's really, I, I love that because that is such an important part of the day. And it's a part yeah. that, that's how we sell ourselves when we're meeting with clients is yes, you know, obviously we've got the photography background and the photography skills, but a lot of clients, typically we end up being their wedding resource because oh, we're yes. the one that's with them throughout the entire day. A lot of the other vendors, they, you know, the DJ, it's maybe at night. Yeah. Um, if they're not working with a planner, you know, the florist comes in and drops off the flowers, but we're that one constant that's there yep. throughout the whole day. And we have to deal with, you know, bride meltdowns or groom meltdowns. Or it's raining or you're running late. And these are all of the things, you know, I say that this is the resource that I wish I had when I got into business. And it's true because I wish that someone had come along and taught me wedding day skills, mm -hmm. not just photo skills, not just how to like family formals or, you know, how to take a picture of a bride by a window, but the what do you do if and how do you handle this? And the actual business of shooting a wedding and the logistics of it it kind of gets glossed over and tucked under behind photo skills or you know, not really addressed directly. And I think that it's so important that it should be pulled out and taught on its own. Yeah, oh, 100%. And a lot of people, I think, even find the only the only way they get that education or that is experience is by going and doing a wedding. <laughs> trial by fire. A trial by fire. Yep. And then they learn very quickly, <laughs> I don't want to shoot weddings because I'm just not ready. You know, it's I'm not true. ready. For them, right? It's so. true. So it's like newborn photography. Like oh, I know I, hate that. I'm never I don't do, do newborn that. photography because <laughs> I don't want to get a baby pooping on me, and and, and I don't know Oops. how to calm a nope. crying baby. Those nope. have nothing to do with photography skills. Babies though. do not like me. No, babies <laughs> do not like me whatsoever. But that's I mean, I watch you. someone like Kelly Brown teaching how to shoot baby photography, and the technical side of it is fantastic. But then when she starts talking about the actual baby wrangling skills. I'm like, no, I'm good. Yep, <laughs> I'll thing. stick so, with pride. I'm good. <laughs> so wedding wrangling skills, I guess, yes. would be the really important. So yes. of those five pillars, if you had to identify the most important pillar, oh, no. which, which pillar would you say is the most, which pillar is the most important? If you had, you could only pick to be strongest in one of those pillars and oh, which no. pillar okay. do you think is the, is commonly the weakest amongst photographers or new photographers, old photographers? I think the weak link for a lot of people is business and finance um, because a lot of people sort of learn the business second, right? You go into it loving wedding photography and wanting to shoot weddings and then the actual running of the business is something that you sort of piece together as you go along. Not a lot of people get a lot of money and finance education from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Of all of them, if I had to pick one to be the absolute strongest, I would go with photo skills because you can run a good business, you can market yourself all day long, you can be the best person to deal with on a wedding day and like make your clients super happy. But if you don't have the actual technical chops to back it up, there's only gonna be so far that you can go. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. But I mean, that's a really hard question because breaking them up into the pillars, they're all crucial. Right. And to be successful, you have to be sort of a master of all. But yeah, it's just interesting to see how the different pillars are applicable to different stages of being in business and how they will focus in and out of importance as you go through the years. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It's, uh, you do have to like say, have to be proficient in, in all of those, you know, and of course there are ways like that. I know some people that will outsource certain pillars right? if they find right. they're not very good at say post-production <laughs> that, that you can, you can outsource that pillar to somebody else yes, you uh, can. The, or even the business and the finance side. If, if you, you want absolutely to can. To yep. that, right? so, and that's, that's the sort of the stuff that we sort of talk about in here too is should you outsource? How do you know when you're ready to outsource? How do you, do you outsource or do you hire an employee? And do you do your own books? Do you have an accountant that does that? How do you find an accountant? All of that stuff. So that it's is a good all time. amazing all resources. Yeah. So what's the, uh, I guess, um, how can people join and what are they looking at in terms of cost? Is it an annual fee? Is it a monthly fee? Is it a one-time fee? What's the, what's the structure? How's it structured? For so right now, I don't mean to get everybody excited and then get you unexcited, but right now our doors are actually closed. We let okay. in sort of an inaugural group of people um, to get in, start enjoying it as we're building it, you know, kick the tires, all of that good stuff. So right now, if you hop over to theweddingschool.net, you can get yourself on the mailing list and we're going to let you know when we're going to open up again. Um, and it will be soon, very soon. So stay tuned. Excellent. But the way it works is you pay for your first year and that gets you all of the fundamentals, all of the textbooks and a year of access to the learning library. And then once your year is up, you can download the fundamentals and the textbooks and they are always yours. Or you can continue on at a low monthly rate to stay into the learning library. And if you continue on that way, you'll continue to have full access to everything we put in it for a year. So I've had people ask, they're like, well, once, once everything's sort of full up and you open up again, are we going to have to pay more to access what you've put in there in the future? But no, everything we put in during your year it's just for you to see. And then after that, if you stay on through the learning library, you can access whatever you want. And Excellent. it's there for you. Yeah. That, sound, that sounds amazing. And it's just that one, so. that one stop shop for yes. Susan Stripling's brain, basically. <laughs> and the brains of others. Brain, Sometimes the brains of harder others than me. Dumped into there, into, into yes. a one stop shop. Um, I was going to ask you, know, I had to, I had a, Something off the top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> it, um, so one of the things with with education I find, and because I have a background in education, is you know you can you can learn and like you mentioned the different ways that people learn. Um, what about in terms of feedback and knowing where you're at and being able to sort of evaluate yourself? Is there going to be any type of like testing or exams or like a certification? Is that something That's that you great question actually? About? And that is, it's not something that we're doing in 2016 but it is definitely something that is on our radar and we know that people want that. They, they want certification. They want, you know, sort of a, a course to follow. Um, don't think that we're not thinking about that because we are. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to happen this year, but it is definitely um, a large bright point on our roadmap for the future. For sure. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Cause you don't, that's the other thing with a lot of the online education that's out there is it's pretty much just a one way. Yeah. Here's the, here's the video or here's, but there's not a lot of that two way. Yes. Um, and that's very, I think, very valuable in education, right? Being able to evaluate yourself, see where you're at, monitor your progression. See. And that's something that's very, very important to me is we don't just throw a bunch of education out there and we say, well, here you go, watch these Good videos. Yeah. But yeah. That, that we give you a course to follow. Yeah. And uh, just trust that we have um, very large plans in 2016 and 2017 and beyond to continue bringing you better education and continue tailoring it so that it fits your needs. That's very exciting. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that you'll have, there's other brains involved and there you might are. have some uh, guest instructors. Oh, care that to we tease, will. Care to <laughs> you might see in the I, I wish that I could tell you them, all of them, but I can't. Okay. Um, I can definitely tell you that for those of you who like um, my husband, Cliff Mountner, Mm -hmm. uh, who is one of the best technical shooters that I have ever seen um, and also runs an absolutely killer business that looks absolutely nothing like my business. Um, I have twisted his arm and he will definitely be appearing here. And we do have others. It's not just, you know, two, three, four other photographers. We are working on a list to bring you both people that you know and love and people that you've never heard of before who are masters in their field. 
And that's just, just really exciting. That I hate is, to overuse that phrase, but it that is. is. That is exciting, yes. So that'll be, that's the tease. That's, so we don't want to give it all away. Just tease, <laughs> right? Good things. And I think that anybody who is, who's ever watched me talk or read my books, or they know that if I tell them we're going to do something, it's going to happen. So it's been very amazing to see the, the response so far from everyone who is trusting where this is going. Um, and again, it's just, it's just really exciting. I know I keep saying that, but it's the best word for it. No, it's when I heard about it, I was really excited. Um, and so, you know, when, of course, with TWIP Weddings, our podcast, we try to focus on the wedding photography space and cover every, you know, yeah. everything, covering those five pillars that you mentioned as well. So it's exciting to see that there's going to, you know, finally going to be a, a resource like this out there for photographers. I know. I so wish that it, I honestly do wish that this is, had existed for me 14 years ago. It would have made everything a lot easier. Awesome. Do you, I, again, I'm spinning with ideas here, but do you, is there a conference perhaps in the future for members or something maybe? It is very interesting that you should say that. Um, and again, without giving too much away or being too vague, I will have to be super vague and say vague book it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that is not something that we have um, decided upon, but much like certification, it is something that is definitely in our headspace and something that would be important to me. Nice. So it's up on the whiteboard as a maybe this could it's be up a, in in a fluorescent letters on the whiteboard. We can we can say that for sure. Um, awesome. Because it, there there is a lot to be said for the in person component, um, not only to meet fellow photographers but also to learn in person. And so when you're looking at all of the di different atmospheres, textbooks, online learning, you know there is a lot to be said for in person learning, and we are definitely thinking of that. Yeah, and even just the building of a community around yeah. a shared oh, yeah. interest is so huge these days, right? Because it is a I very, agree. it's such a solitary, for most photographers, it's a very solitary, We're all lonely. Uh, very lonely <laughs> existence, right? It is. And it's so true. to have a community that you feel a part of and that you can bounce ideas off of other people, yeah. I think that's important as well, too, because yeah, it can so be, too. particularly, I know a lot of photographers, sometimes they don't want to maybe necessarily do that with people that are in their local area because they're afraid, you know, so, but if they can, they feel a little more comfortable if they can maybe vent or rant to people outside of their area. They yeah, feel less and, and also so. it's funny, like the whole intense competition within your own area, it's like, don't you want to get to know your competition and become friends with them? Because then yeah. you can send weddings to them and they can send them back to you and oh, everybody yeah. ends up winning in it, the it's end. It's where most of my referrals come from, actually. Yeah, is, other, is photographers. Other, other photographers. Other yep. local photographers, right? So, But there Absolutely. are some that don't want to play in the sandbox with others. And that's so, cool, that's you know. cool. Everybody's different. True. One last question before yes, we've got please. two more little segments to cover. What do you think makes a great photographic educator? Huh, that's actually an excellent question. Uh, the first thing, honest, uh, this, the first thing, honestly, is honesty. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I don't like um, educators that talk around a subject or try to sugarcoat a subject or make it sound like the whole industry is always unicorns and rainbows and we're all going to fly around in pots of money if you become a wedding photographer, because that's not really how it goes. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to be honest um, and also kind with your honesty. Um, having a pulse, uh, having your finger on the pulse of the industry, you, you've got to be out there working in it in some capacity to stay relevant. Um, I also think you have to deeply care about your industry. You can't just be out there educating for money or fame or anything like that. People see through that first and foremost, but also, how are you going to be effective as an educator if you don't actually care about the subject that you're educating on? Right. Um, and then just a, a large desire to see the industry succeed above and beyond and after you. I think it's really important. So what we're trying to do here is give you honesty and be kind about it, create a community, and then just keep elevating our industry because I legitimately really care about where it is, not only while I'm working in it, but after I'm working in it. Yeah, well, I think you embody all of those things. Thank you. Perfectly. So I'm really excited <laughs> that, that you're the one that's kind of spearheading and 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 doing this. I will be the one for there's you. There's others that could have, and maybe <laughs> you know, I don't know. So, but I'm really happy that you're doing this. So I think it's going to be fantastic. So that's great. So, um, where can people go if they want to get on the list, or when this when it opens up again, kind of sign up? Yeah, and it will be opening up again soon. Um, so you will want to hop over there. But if you go to the wedding school. Dot net, there will be a place for you to go sign up on the mailing list and you'll be notified the next time we're open again.
Perfect. And we'll put links to that um, in the show notes for this oh, episode. Oh, that would be awesome. Well. Thank you. So, yeah, so people can go to, uh, just go to our website and then there'll be links to it from yeah. there. Very good. All right. Well, before we wrap up, we've got two more segments, if okay. you don't mind. Um, I don't so mind. Week, um, we choose a listener question to answer on the show. Ooh, okay. And so I thought this would be an awesome question um, for you. So we've got a question from Denise. And Denise, okay. um, she asks, I've been photographing weddings for just over a year, and I really want to specialize in photojournalistic wedding photography. I'm finding it hard to find clients who only want that style of photography. I know I need to show more of what I want to shoot on my website to attract the right clients, but since I haven't been shooting for very long, I don't have a very large portfolio. It's the age old problem, you know, can't get a job because I don't have experience. I can't get experience because I don't have a job. What Welcome can to I wedding do? photography. <laughs> yeah, so what can Denise do to attract, because what she's saying is she wants to be able yeah. to show more photojournalistic work on her website right. to attract the types of clients that they right. want that particular look as opposed to the more, I guess, formal traditional photography. So right. what should she do? So, you know, I what I did when I was new into weddings is I really wanted to focus more on the documentary side of things. You know, that's where my love was. So I would say the first 20 to 25 weddings that I shot were clients that wanted more traditional stuff. They wanted more posed images, um, but that's not what I showed after the fact. I picked up these weddings. I shot these weddings for experience, and then I called out what I wanted to show from the wedding. So, you know, being in business for one year is, is in the grand scheme of things for a wedding photographer, not that long. Right. So keep at it and keep shooting weddings. And then even if you have a client who wants you to pose them, 80% of the day, you've got 20% of the day that's documentary, you know, make sure that while you're doing all of these post portraits that you document the moments in between the portraits and the, the natural interaction, call out what you want people to see and show that. Like I could take my portfolio right now and only show family formals, camera aware stuff of the bride and groom, very formal details, and I could pitch my work in one way. Or I could take my work, take all of the portraits away, bring back only the the moments the moments the moments and show those and I look like a completely different type of photographer so yeah you might not at the very beginning get clients who 100% want you to be documentary and that's okay it might take you a couple of years to get those clients to start finding you but call out those really strong documentary moments and have those be the ones that you're primarily showing on your website and social media and over time that's what people will start coming to you to look for fantastic so I mean I did something very similar about a year ago when I realized that People were coming to me wanting these like epic, super grand, like sweeping landscape portraits and very dramatic stuff. Um, and I was wondering why I wasn't getting clients that were focusing more on like the emotion. And mm -hmm. then a very smart friend of mine said, because everything on your website is grand and sweeping. Like everyone on your website is like solemn and like very serious and it's all very dramatic. You know, put pictures of people having fun on your website. And I thought, yeah. oh my gosh, she's right. Yeah. So I did. I went back and pulled more pictures. They were still, you know, obviously still my style, but focused more on the emotional side of things, pushed those pictures higher up in my website. And over time, it really changed the type of inquiries that I was getting. So, yeah. yeah. I like that advice and having just a third, you know, second set of eyes look at your stuff because we yeah. look at our work one way and we have emotional attachments to certain favorite images, yeah. right? But have somebody <laughs> yeah, else look at them and, and give their feedback, I think is important too. So It's true. Like my friend who looked through my website and is like, listen, everything looks really great, but nobody looks particularly happy. And then I went back and took a look at it and said, oh, you're right. Like I was so focused on putting like the best of the best and the most dramatic on my site that I was ignoring that I had really great dramatic images of people laughing and crying and talking. And so I had to sort of round it out. I was unintentionally limiting myself. Yeah. But you can, you'll find, even if, even if you only get three, four, five pictures per wedding that are really great and documentary, mm -hmm. show those. That's what people are going to think you're shooting. Yeah. And that's probably enough to be honest, right? Like you don't it's need true. to have a gallery of, of 10,000 images. No, not right? at all. People not at go all. Through those, so. I'd rather see a gallery of 50 images that are very focused in one direction than 200 images that are like all over the place. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Excellent. Well, great advice. Hopefully that helps Thank Denise you. again. I, I hope that, so too. You know, there's no magic. There's no silver bullet. There's no there's magic not. pill, right? Sorry. It's just time. Time, unfortunately, is, an experience. is needed an experience. So yeah. very good. Well, if you have a question for us, we want to hear from you and answer your questions. So just head on over to thisweekinphoto.com and you can leave your questions and comments on the blog post. Or you can also send us an email at twipwed at thisweekinphoto.com. 
or if you are social media friendly and you, you want to go that way, just use uh, the hashtag TwipWed, and we'll keep an eye out for those. Awesome. Well, our last segment is our picks of the week, and each episode we'll share a photography-related item that we think would benefit wedding photographers. Our picks can be anything as long as they are somehow related to photography or the business of photography, and I know I might be putting you a bit on the spot here, Susan. I don't know if you have a pick ready for us, but I'm going to see. If uh, um... No, <laughs> it's like a, it's a um, photography-related item that we think would benefit wedding photographers. Yeah, what's something you use? What's something you couldn't live without besides your camera and lenses? Can it have, I mean, it's, it's funny. We were literally just having a conversation about this before we did this podcast, and we were talking about our Apple Watches. Okay. Um, and I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous, but we were talking about how I often need to communicate with my assistant on the wedding day and it looks super unprofessional for us to keep pulling out our phones and texting each other. Right. So we actually both got Apple watches and filled them full of the stock phrases that we text each other. Like, where are you? Come back to the room. Groom is ready. Bride is ready. Where are you? <laughs> Ooh, okay. Stuff like that. And so if my assistant and I need to reach each other, we can text each other from our watches and we end up looking a lot more professional than pulling out our phones and constantly texting because they don't know if we're texting or like surfing Facebook. Gotcha. So the Apple Watch, which I know sounds kind of that's, weird. No, that's I'd never thought of it in that way. So instead of having yeah. like a headset and a you know walkie talkie, yeah, we tried the whole headset walkie talkie thing, and I just felt kind of dumb. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, I kept getting tangled in the wires, and it was really bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the Apple Watch to just send quick texts back and forth, and now like if my husband texts me or a friend texts me, I can just sort of dismiss it. But my if my assistant needs to find me. I know right away, and in walkie-talkies, I couldn't always talk back to her because I'd be in a situation where I had to be quiet. Mm -hmm. um, so using the Apple Watch as a walkie-talkie has been my biggest revelation of the past couple months. That's very interesting. Can, can you do you that, will. the haptic touch thing where it can send like, does it, I don't, I don't have one, so but does it, you can send like pulses of things? Like, can yeah, you set up so like, like when I code? text her, I could literally just pick a stock response and hit yeah. go. And it double taps on the inside, like where your watch meets your wrist. Okay, so and so if I'm shooting something and she's trying to find me or ask me a question, I just feel tap, 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 tap. And then I look and nobody knows if I'm just checking the time or if like my assistant and I are corresponding with each other. Oh, and again, I know it's a little cool. thing, but I just don't ever want people at weddings to see me texting and be like, that photographer was on her phone all day long, even though I was con like in contact with my assistant yeah. all day long. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I literally only wear this when I'm traveling or at weddings. Um, otherwise, I tend to lose it in my house ah. <laughs> a lot. Well, yeah. maybe I'll have to rethink my decision to not buy an Apple Watch. I haven't. I don't use it for anything else. Like I don't yeah. use it for activity or email or anything. I literally use it as my walkie-talkie device with my assistant on the wedding day. Cool. Like and also it. because people say, "Hey, that's an Apple Watch." That's an Apple Watch. Can I see it? Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty, pretty <laughs> much for cool points. Yes. That is awesome. Fantastic. Great pick. Well, my pick this week is um, just. Instagram now supporting multiple accounts. Now I don't have this yet. That is, oh my gosh, it's major. It's major. Major. It's yes. Do, do, what do you have for your Instagram accounts? You have your sort of your professional work. Yeah, right? I have Susan Stripling Photography, which is like my professional work. I have Susan Stripling, which is pictures of my dog. I'm gonna be okay. honest, it's pictures of my dog. That's good. Mine is a lot of that too. Or food. Food yeah. and dog. Yeah. And then I have um, The Wedding School, which has its own Instagram, The Wedding School. Yes. But now, instead of having to log out and log back in Again. and log out yeah. and log back in, you literally just click at the top, pick your account that you want to work from, and go. And it means that I'm actually keeping up with all of them a little bit better mm -hmm. because the logging out and logging in was just so You're like, oh, just annoying. Yeah. I just, like, I'm just not going to post this picture of my dog. Yeah. So for those of you who like my dog, you will now know there will be more pictures of my dog yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah. just easier. It's easier. And if you're doing hashtags, you know, you would log out and you would log back in and it would forget all of your saved hashtags. Mm -hmm. And now you can switch through the accounts and it just remembers hashtags you've used before. And it is so much more efficient. I am a big fan. Good pick. So that yeah. is, yeah, that is a nice feature. I still don't have it. I'm waiting for it to magically appear. <laughs> my, it just showed up on mine one day. Like it yeah. literally just popped in one so, day. If you don't have it yet, it's they're rolling it out, I think, in phases. And I, I don't know. I'm not sure it's how they determine so who gets it. But yeah. It's so have you used Latergram? Oh my God, Latergram is totally my thing. Yeah. Like, ah, uh, yeah, I love it so much. Um, it is. It has completely revolutionized the way that I use Instagram because I can just queue it all up on mm -hmm. my computer and then install the uh, Latergram app on my phone and then it just ports it over to Instagram. And it is no more trying to send myself stuff on Dropbox and trying to like send mm -hmm. over my captions and notes. It just, I now I have a huge library 
Like I have a massive library of things to post and I just pick what I want to post every single day and post it whenever I want to. Yeah. It has also streamlined that process. Um, oh, so much easier. We love Instagram even more. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, I've, I've been using it for the last couple of weeks and it's so much easier. So yeah. Latergram can be another Instagram. And Instagram is, is my favorite. It's my favorite social media channel right now. And anything that I can use that will make it easier just means I get to love it more. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, good picks this week. Well, I guess that, sadly, that brings us to the end. Tears. Of another episode. <laughs> Of Tup, of Tup Weddings, but I really want to thank um, our sponsors for their support, and I particularly want to thank you, Susan, for thank coming you. on the show. Anytime. This is really fun. Yeah, we'd love to have you back on again. Um, hey, listen, it was either this or call a wedding, and this was way more fun than that. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I'm more fun than calling a wedding. You're Woo. totally more fun than calling weddings. I will Excellent. come back and hang out with you Yeah, anytime. we'd love to get you on with, you know, when we have Brian and Robert on as well, and get yeah. the four of us to kind of get some heads together, and, and uh, this would be awesome. I know we kind of s- scheduled this in um, for, uh, you know, just with the launch yeah. of the wedding school, kind of a special uh, insert that we're doing. I but, will yeah, come talk to you anytime you want. That would be fantastic. So, of course, yeah. we want to remember to send in your questions for the show and share your thoughts uh, by commenting on the blog post for this episode. So, uh, before we say a fond farewell, Susan, um, where what have you got coming up? Where can people, we're going to air this, this is going to go out beginning of March. Yes. So, where can people come see you? WPPI, I'm guessing? Yes, I will be speaking um, twice at WPPI. I have a platform class about... Humorously enough, as we were just talking about, managing social media. Excellent. Um, everything that you need to know to create a social media campaign and run it with no pain. Um, I'm also doing a master class on finding beauty in unexpected places. So if you are coming to WPPI, you do have to sign up for the master class. You can just show up for the platform class. And I'll also be speaking um, for Nikon at the Nikon booth in the trade show twice. Yeah. So yeah, that is, that's a huge honor. I love those guys and it's always good to speak for them. And I will be talking um, and live shooting about wedding details Excellent. at the Nikon booth. So it'll be really fun. I'm really excited Yay. about that. I will see you there because I am Yay. going as well. My second year. We're all there. Um, yes. So yeah, if you see me at WPPI, you should come say hi. Fantastic. And that's you and all of you. You and all of us, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. And so when you're not speaking at WPPI, where else can people go um, to, to find out and follow you? Obviously, we talked about theweddingschool.net. Yes, theweddingschool.net. You can also um, find me at susanstripling.com, uh, Facebook. Uh, we have a wedding school page. I also have Susan Stripling Photography. But my favorite and the one that you should come follow is Instagram, which is Susan Stripling Photography. And also, as I've mentioned, at Susan Stripling for pictures of my dog and the marquees of Broadway theaters because that's my favorite thing in the world. And the wedding school also has an Instagram account, which is Yay. at the wedding school. So come say hi. That's exciting. We will put links to all of those in the show notes. That would be so amazing. If you missed anything, just jump onto the show note and you'll see it. If you're looking for me, um, you can visit my website over at momentsanddigital.com. Um, or if you want to follow me, I'm at Bruce Clark on most of the usual social networks. And that's Clark with an E at the end. And of course, be sure to visit our website at thisweekinphoto.com for this show and all the other great shows that are part of the TWIP network. And thanks again for listening to TWIP Weddings, raising the bar one wedding at a time.